a woman like actually Mindy Kaling mm. has been really interesting as a role model for me because I, I hear stuff that she says. She uh, said a quote that was like, people ask her, how do you get so much confidence? Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, well, you know, she's offended by that because it's like, oh, you're not white and you're not, um, and you are a woman. Uh, so, you know. How could you possibly yeah, how feel could you have good? Confidence? Also, <laughs> yeah. like she said, also, you know, because I'm not skinny. I think I saw um, this. I really yeah, like that. I, that. I, I thought that was really interesting. She does things in subtle ways, like, where it's like saying, why do we treat women this way? So I think that she's an interesting role model. I have the same role models, I would say. <laughs> where like some of the things that her character says on the show are so smart that if you weren't listening intently, yeah. you'd have missed the joke. Because um, she said something that was so over everyone's head. Mm -hmm. And it's usually um, what you're saying, exactly yeah. what you're saying about um, her commenting on why do we treat women this way? Right. Or, you know, there, she had one scene where she was like, who's your spirit animal? Um, and you have to pick a singer and a food. So she was like, mine is Beyonce Pad Thai or something, right? <laughs> her role model, her, her her essence was a black woman, right? So like a fierce black woman. Yeah. But then also like Pad Thai was just like, that was funny. <laughs> Made the joke funny. But I think it was, it was an amazing moment because um, Beyonce sort of, you know, yeah. is everyone's spirit animal <laughs> in a lot of ways. So how do you feel about Beyonce? Because I think that there was, so a song like Flawless where she's, she is sampling um, Chimananda Adichie um, saying we should all be feminist. And she's saying, I'm identifying as a feminist. Um, did you feel or did any of your peers feel that that was a, a moment when Beyonce puts on the label as a feminist? No, I didn't actually, um, I didn't hear girls bringing that up. I think it's, sometimes I feel like things get lost. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, I thought that was a huge, that was a huge moment. Um, I listened to that song and I was really impressed. Um, and I also think, you know, as her endorsing the Ban Bossy campaign mm -hmm. was definitely, for her, a good move. Um, mm -hmm. It seems kids don't even take away from. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people don't, people are so obsessed with, you know, just the song and, mm -hmm. oh, Beyonce's so fierce and I love Beyonce, you know. Which I think I actually really like that she's become such a big um, person as far as, you know, how many people look up to her. Uh, especially as a black girl, mm -hmm. I definitely am proud that there's someone out there. In terms of the Ban Bossy campaign, is that something that resonated with you as a as a young woman, or were you like, that's silly? I'm not it, sure about that, yeah. but I definitely, I think that along the lines of that, you know, we should be banning things like, oh, that woman's too aggressive, or that woman is so emotional, I can't deal with women because they're always PMSing. Right. Um, yeah. I've heard a lot of crazy stuff, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think Bossy is just the start of it. Um, because growing up, now that I think about it, you don't. S I've never really heard kids be like, "Oh, I don't like him because he's so bossy." Or if a guy is being bossy, he's just a good leader, right. which is not obviously fair. Mm -hmm. um, so stuff like that, I think, has actually made an impact mm -hmm. on me. Um, so if I hear a kid at school saying something that I s disagree with strongly, I don't want to, you know, come up and be in their face about it because I'm like. I don't want to be the angry black girl right, at my right, school. Yeah. I don't want to speak too loudly about anything, really, because I'm worried about what it might um, say and what it might attach, what stereotype I might be attached to because of it. Mm -hmm. Part of um, the joke that I always say too is that once you do identify as a feminist, you're like, whoa, the world's really messed up. Yeah. Right? It's like, you know, you have that light bulb moment and you're like, whoa, Blurred Lines is the number one song <laughs> and nobody seems to mind. So do you think that something about our society has said, well, just because it's saying bad messages, it doesn't matter, we can still listen to it and support it? No, I, I, I usually like to say that you can't, uh, you know, have these bad messages in songs and then it not manifest in real life because we can look at real life and see when thing, two things are correlated, it doesn't mean that one causes the other thing. But I think that blurred lines and, and, and rape culture are in, intimately connected. And um, blurred lines is a, is a manifestation of rape culture and popular culture.